Hi, I'm George and welcome to GMakes, and this is part two of my modern texting effect tutorial based on the Netflix series Sex Education. Uh, if you haven't seen part one, you should probably check that out, otherwise if you've already seen it or like skipping ahead, let's jump right into After Effects. So here I am in After Effects. I have uh, another plate of stock footage, again from the intro to this video, uh, set up in my background. Uh, and I've got the basically what we did in the last video, part one. If you haven't watched, go ahead and watch that. Just to see how to make the text bubble and how to make this little opening animation, uh, which I'll show you. Here's what we've got so far. There we go. Pretty straightforward. Uh, so what we're going to accomplish in this tutorial is uh, making this bubble look a little more towards the aesthetic of uh, Sex Education, the Netflix series. Uh, I've already changed the colors uh, from my last tutorial, and I just took this photo I have uh, of one of the text bubbles, and I just used the color picker, and I picked the right colors for uh, the bubble and the text. Um, and then uh, what we're gonna do, though, is we're gonna make this from the static bubble that just scales up and down, uh, so basically opening and closing the text from the static bubble, and we're gonna give this uh, some motion so it's gonna actually stick to the phone, and we're also going to rotate it so it looks a little bit more like it's in the shot and not just a flat thing uh, composited on top. Um, but first, to match this aesthetic a little bit better to what we've got right here, there's a little distortion from the grain and everything, um, And but uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to match that a little more so it's not just this flat thing. I'm not gonna quite go ahead and completely match the grain of my footage, which is something you could do to composite it better in. I'm just gonna give the bubble itself a little style, uh, and then you could add grain on top of that to blend it more into your footage. So how I'm gonna accomplish that is by going to my effects and using the good old uh, turbulent noise so we're going to take that and we're going to drag that onto our bubble. I've got my pre-comp uh, just called text. And there we go. So it doesn't look very good, uh, but we're going to move that uh, in scale. So we're going to take off uniform scaling because I'm going to make this, let's say 300 by 10. And you can see that really scrunched it down, just gave some nice little lines. You can mess with these how you want to do them. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to change that blending mode. You can do screen, which will keep the white bits, get rid of the black, or we can keep the black bits and get rid of the white. I'm going to use multiply to do that. And lastly, I'm going to turn the opacity pretty far down. I just want this to be a subtle effect. So somewhere that looks good to me. And let's say, let's go 15. I like a good divide by five, a good multiple of five, I should say. There we go. So that's my effect for how to get that little bit of noise. And again, you could add another noise on top of it to match more your background, but that's just to give the bubble itself a little more texture. The last thing we're going to do to cover that aesthetic bit is go ahead and back to our text pre-comp. So again, this is the pre-comp that has just the text bubble itself as well as the text on top of it. And now for each of our text layers, so for me that's I added the name up here and also the actual text of the text we're going to add a layer style. So I'm gonna to go to layer with the layer selected. In this case, it's the one that says George. Uh, I'm gonna go into the layer panel. I'm gonna to go to layer styles and we're gonna do an inner shadow. And you can see because what happens on their text is there is this little bit of depth to it. Uh, and this inner shadow just gives pretty nice control. You could also again use an emboss or a gradient or not a gradient, a uh, bevel, but I like the inner shadow. It gives a little more control. So if we go back into the layer styles, we can do inner shadow, and everything from there seems to be uh, roughly from this angle, roughly a little bit on top, seems all the light. So I'm not gonna touch the angle uh, for the default. I am gonna make the opacity lower. Let's change that to 50, because I want this very subtle. Uh, and we're gonna change uh, the distance a little bit. 
We just want this a subtle effect. So maybe from five, maybe to two. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, you can also mess in things like the choke, how far it gets in there. I'm gonna leave that at the default zero. And lastly, the size, how much. We do want this fairly soft. So I might bump that up to let's say eight, just to give it a little more. And maybe we even bump the size down then. There we go, that, I like that. That works for me. So again, my settings on there are the distance is one, the size is eight. Uh, you can mess with noise too if you're trying to match something, but those are the really only settings that change. I also made the opacity down to 50. Uh, and those are good things to remember, but I'm just gonna go ahead and add a layer styles as well to my other text to make them match. Uh, luckily I remember those numbers pretty easily inner shadow, and we're gonna edit those same things. That's opacity down to 50, distance down to two or one, and size to eight. And you can see that just gives a little bit of that effect. If we go back to our arrow effect, you can see that just gives it that little bit of indentation. Um, again, you can mess with a couple of ways to do that. I just like the layer styles for uh, the inner shadow. I think that's a quick way and it's a great way. So now we're gonna move on to how to actually make this bubble move. Now that we've matched the aesthetic a little bit closer, we're gonna get this thing to actually stick to this phone. And doing that is pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Um, I've got the section of uh, my clip, which is a little bit longer than this, but this is just the section that I want this bubble to stick to. You could even make it shorter. Uh, if you really know specifically where you want it. Uh, and I'm going to just do a simple motion track on this footage. So I'm gonna select my background layer, which is my footage. I'm gonna go to tracker and I'm gonna track motion. And this will open up the layers panel for us. And now I'm just gonna use a single track point. Uh, I'm gonna make it fairly large area to cover and to search for it. Cause this is gonna be a pretty quick track. Doesn't have to be anything super specific. I'm going to grab the corner of that phone and I'm just going to track forward. Uh, analyze forward. It's gonna be a pretty straightforward track. One point, we're just tracking position. The last thing before we hit analyze forward is we're going to make a new null layer. This is pretty standard when you're doing motion tracking in After Effects. So we're gonna layer, new, null object. Uh, and what this null object is gonna be, it's just gonna be where we're gonna put all of our motion tracking data. Uh, our data so that we can uh, pick whip later the motion, uh, the position of our bubble to it. So we're gonna make sure the target is not on the picture, but rather on our null, it will be on the top layer. Check that all out. And we're gonna analyze forward now. I'll probably cut to if there's any issues I need to solve or I'll just fast forward this whole bit and I'll see you when this is done tracking. Here we go. All right, so my tracking is done. Uh, as you can see by all these nice little points that follow that corner of the phone's journey throughout the footage. Uh, and now I'm going to apply this track to uh, my null layer. So I'm gonna make sure that my, I'm still in this texting window. I'm gonna go over here, make sure my motion target is that null, and I'm just gonna hit apply. I'm gonna need X and Y, cause I want it to track both this way and up and down. So, okay. And there we are back in the main composition. If we hit play, uh, might not see anything, but if we hit the null, if we click the null layer, you can see it's following that motion perfectly. So now I'm gonna go ahead and choose a frame where uh, I can see and where I want my text to be. Um, it's already out. I've already animated it opening and closing as in the last tutorial. So I already have this set to the size I want it to be. Uh, if I didn't, if it was larger, smaller, you would scale it up in a full frame so you know what size I want it to be. I've also got the anchor point at this corner of kind of the little the end or the beginning of the speech bubble. Uh, and now with all of that set up, I'm going to go to my text layer, make sure uh, I open up the transform options as well as I'm gonna do that with my null layer, the transform options, because I'm gonna take the position, I'm gonna pick whip it from my text pre-comp to the position of my null layer. And you might see that snap into place a little bit. Uh, the anchor point will snap uh, to the null, uh, which is our tracking data. So if we go back to the beginning now uh, and we play it as it kind of loads through, you can see it pops up and stays attached to our phone. 
And there we are. That is the basics of making, giving it some motion. So we've matched the aesthetic of uh, the speech bubble, of the text bubble, and we've also matched the motion to give it a little more dynamic uh, look to it. Now the last thing we're gonna do to again kind of make it not this thing that's just stuck on top of uh, this 2D image that's stuck on top of this 3D image, even though it is moving with the 3D image, uh, is we're going to go ahead, go down to our text pre-comp, the bubble, and we're going to click this button, which is a 3D layer. So now this can move in three dimensions, so we can rotate it uh, any way we want, but we are going to rotate it along the Y. So you can do that either from your options down on the transform options, or you can just grab this nice little handle, the green one, and rotate it. I'm gonna match just for this shot. It's nothing too crazy just a little bit of that angle. That's maybe a little too much. I'm gonna lessen that just a little bit. A little bit more maybe. This is all kind of your own personal opinion and how you want it to look. There we go. Uh, you could also animate this as the camera rotates. You could animate the rotation, but I'm happy with it just being static. And so if we go all the way back uh, and hit play, this might take a little bit to load. Uh, and I'm gonna fast forward this rendering all these frames for the first time, and then we'll see the smooth playback in just a second. Uh, so all those frames have rendered, and here is what we've got. It pops up, it's tracked, and it disappears. And it's also at that nice little angle, so it looks like it's a little more involved in the footage and not just a 2D element stuck on top. And that is gonna wrap it up for this tutorial. Uh, the last thing we're going to do before we would export this, either just as the overlay, so as a AVI or a QuickTime with RGB plus alpha selected, uh, or as the full composition, if you've got all your footage or you want to keep the background footage, uh, we're going to make sure that we have this button next to where we hit the 3D. Uh, it's the motion blur. Uh, we're going to want that just so that uh, it won't look as jittery. It won't kind of be clean. It will match our footage a little bit better uh, and it will actually look like, again, it's part of the real scene. So that is part two of, and probably the final part of how to make the sex education texting effect. This one covered a little more the aesthetic sense of sex education as well as giving the bubble some motion uh, and a little bit of a 3D element. Uh, again, you can go even further with this. You can add grain. You could add a little bit more noise to it. Uh, you could make it fully 3D. You could track the 3D in. You could add more text bubbles. Do whatever your heart desires, whatever you want to do. And the next part of this tutorial is going to be a part like 2A. Uh, it's going to be making your footage match the aesthetic as well as your text bubble. Uh, if you've read the text that's being uh, received here at all, uh, it's going to get this kind of dispersion effect, which is an in-camera effect, but uh, there's a way to do it in Blender, so stay tuned for that next time. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, I hope you've learned something, and I hope you make something cool with it. Uh, so again, see you next time. I've been George, and take care!